happy NaNoWriMo day 22 and happy Thanksgiving. I was actually not really in the mood to come on camera today. I haven't written anything, so I did not meet my 42,000 word, word count goal to be at by Thanksgiving. I'm still hanging out at 39,000 words and I haven't really added anything to my story since then. But I just wanted to come on here because I feel that it is important to be honest and open with you guys. The holidays are a really hard time of year for a lot of people. As much as I love the holidays, Christmas being my favorite holiday, and as much as I think that this, this time of year is, can be such a magical time and a time for family and things like that, it can also be a very sad time. You know, for people who don't have family, who don't have a support system, who've lost loved ones, drop it! Ugh. Teddy, always ruining these moments. Who've lost loved ones, especially at this time of year. The holiday season is not really great. You know, you're surrounded by people who are happy all the time and celebrating and excited. But yeah, so the holidays can be really depressing and not everyone has a support system. Not everyone feels like it is a happy time. Not, all, not everyone feels like they have people to celebrate with or a reason to celebrate also for those that suffer with mental illness those that suffer with depression anxiety and i am one of those people you just never know there's no rhyme or reason to this illness and you could just wake up everything could seemingly be fine and then you could just wake up one day be overwhelmed and not want to get out of bed and feel like the walls are closing in on you and feel so many things that are so inexplicable that without a support system and without treatment and without, you know, really having people to have your back and to lift you up in those times, it can be really hard for the outside world to understand. It can be hard for even you yourself, the sufferer of the illness, to understand what's going on with you. And I don't know, I just felt really inspired to speak up because I watched, I think her name is Hannah from A Clockwork Reader. I watched a video that she just put out recently about having an eating disorder and the level of bravery, bravery and vulnerability that it took for her to make that video and come out and stand in her truth is truly admirable and something to be encouraged in others that have a platform and something to be applauded. She didn't have to do that. She didn't have to put her truth out there. She didn't have to stand, you know, on that level of honesty with her viewers. And she didn't have to expose herself and open herself up in that manner, but she did. And she did it because she wanted to really be real about what she's going through and what she's suffering. And she also wanted to be a voice with such a large, large platform. She wanted others who perhaps are in the same place as her to know that they're not alone and I find that to be so courageous, you know? But I've noticed spoken on this channel a little bit about my own battle with depression and anxiety, but I haven't really gone into depth. And I think it's because in the culture that I come from, there really is very little understanding and support for me having, I guess, these, this illness. And even for myself, it's taken a long time for me to admit that this is definitely something very serious that I suffer with and the sad part is that I was getting help and I was in treatment in college which is when you know my I, Teddy come on <laughs> which is when I first started which is when I first started to suffer with anxiety and depression and it got so bad that I almost flunked out of school one semester and I had to go into treatment and I was seeking help very heavily at that time and I still didn't really have support and understanding from my family they didn't believe me and even to this day when I speak on it even now as a grown adult I get a lot of skepticism skepticism I get a lot of skepticism I get a lot of just disbelief and I get a lot of like oh you know you're fine or you're being dramatic or you know, people go through worse things every day, there's nothing wrong with you, blah, blah, blah. And it's really disheartening 
but it's something that I've just grown to expect now, unfortunately. And it no longer surprises me that I don't get the support that I need from those that you would think would be the people to support you the most. But I say all that to say that anyone doing, for anyone this holiday season who is suffering for any reason, whether it be for, from a mental illness of any sort or because they don't have a support system or they're sad or they've lost someone and this is a dark time of year, just know that I completely understand and I'm with you and I'm sending you so much love and so much light and I'm really just praying for you because I understand so much of what you're going through. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> I would just like to take this moment and say what I am thankful for. I am so incredibly thankful and grateful for this platform. I'm thankful for each and every single one of you guys. I'm thankful that you watch my videos, that you comment, that you like. I'm thankful that you subscribe and you've become a part of this community. I'm thankful that my heart, my pure intentions, and my um, genuineness comes through across on the screen to you all and I feel as if you all truly understand me and know my heart and truly truly genuinely care for me and I definitely feel the love all the way across the screen across this medium this platform that we are all sharing and communicating on this social media space that has become such a huge and important part of my life i'm so grateful and thankful for it and i'm also grateful and thankful that we get to continue and that we are all alive and all well to some degree and here together to continue on this journey and yeah that's all i wanted to say thank you so much for joining me here on this channel and becoming a part of my community and as you can see i have my word document open can't really see but that's noveler and i'm about to get some words in it's been quite a while since i've written and for those of you who are curious it's not that i'm no longer serious about nanorimo or that i am not interested in winning it's just that my mental health has definitely taken a hit the past few days and I've just needed to kind of slow down a bit and take care of myself. Also, I have been reading and reading brings me so much joy and also refuels me and inspires me. So I want to fill you guys in on what I'm reading. No, I have not finished And I Darken yet, but I have read like three hood books. <sighs> I swear they're addictive, which I will talk about them later in my wrap up. But I started reading Rose in Bloom, which I told you guys when I was holding it up that I really wanted to read it. So I've started reading it. I'm a few pages in and the memories of reading this book are coming back to me hard and fast. And just why I loved this book so much. And it's just the nostalgia and all the feels from childhood and how much I love this story. They're all coming back, which is great. And then on my Kindle, I actually started reading After by Anna Todd. And I was prompted to do this by several things. First is pure curiosity. I've wanted to read this book for years. There's so many times I almost bought it off of Book Outlet, but I could never find the books in order. 
and it would be like book one and then book three and that just frustrated me so I never quite got down to getting them or maybe I'd have bu I bought so many books from book outlet you guys and because so many of my books are in storage and I'm not able to display them beautifully like like some of my favorite booktubers every time I look at y'all shelves I get so envious because all of my books are in storage because of my current living situation but one day soon they will be out on display but anywho so I can't remember I bought so many books and I, I can't see my books so I don't know if I have if I own any books from the after series but one I've wanted to read the series for years ever since it blew up on Wattpad and became a phenomenon two Mayana from Mayona May from Mayana Reads just did a rent review which was very entertaining and intrigued me even more and three lovely like Laura just came out with the um her reaction to watching the after movie trailer and her just like excitement and fandom couldn't be repressed and it just really ignited that spark to make me want to read the novel even more so i went on amazon and i downloaded a sample onto my kindle which i'm reading right now it's meh it starts off kind of lackluster in my opinion but I will press on and if at the end of the sample I want to continue, which you guys know I probably will because I'm just going to read it honestly to review for y'all out of pure curiosity because people have very strong emotions about this series. Either like Mayana, they just are angry or they like Laura, they love it. So we shall see. Oh, I'm also thankful for this sweatshirt. How bomb is this? Look at these sleeves. Obsessed. <laughs> Primo date 24. Beautiful rainy day after Thanksgiving. And so let's go this way, Teddy. Let's go this way. Today is my NaNoWriMo catch up day one. I've been lucky enough. Hold on. So I've been lucky enough to have been granted the next three days off consecutively. So today is Saturday, so I have today off, even though it's almost three o'clock in the afternoon now. I slept in finished reading two books so I think I will do a November wrap-up I don't know when I'll go up because I've surprised myself and managed to read quite a bit this month <sighs> but yeah hold on there's a car coming anywho so today I don't even know what I was saying I'll probably do a November wrap-up because I've surprised myself and managed to read quite a few books this month because I've needed to decompress and I've needed an escape from writing and usually my escape is either I'm going to read or I'm going to watch some Netflix. And I just haven't gotten to that point yet. I'm going to wait until December because after NaNoWriMo, I think I'm going to take at least until after Christmas off and just enjoy the holidays, enjoy my family. But anywho, so today is NaNoWriMo day 24, but for me it is NaNoWriMo catch up day one since I have the next three days off. So. For the rest of this evening, I plan on writing. So I'm gonna be writing all day. Well, not all day, it's already about three. But I'm gonna be writing all evening tonight, just Saturday, Sunday. I'm gonna write all morning and then I have my live show. And then after the live show, I'm gonna write some more. And then Monday I'm off as well and I plan to get the bulk of my writing done on Monday. So by Tuesday, I hope to be really close to 50,000 words. So I'm not gonna put a word count goal on myself I don't want to put any pressure on myself but we'll see how it goes the last day of NaNoWriMo is my birthday which is November 30th and I don't want to spend that day stressing out and scrambling to win NaNo so I think I'm just going to try to win NaNo early so my goal is to win by at the latest Thursday the 29th by like 11 p.m. or 11 30 p.m. so We'll see how it goes. Come on. You believe in Santa Claus? Let's go. Let's go. 
p.m. on NaNoWriMo day 26. I finished my live show hours ago and I am editing footage from NaNoWriMo vlogs and yeah definitely go check out my live show if you didn't get a chance to check it out. It was a good time. We had fun. Oh my goodness of course it's acting up now. I'm experiencing some tech difficulties, I had some issues with my live feature on YouTube, so I was, it's crazy. So that has slowed me down a bit, and that has definitely handicapped me in what I can write, because the more I write, the more I realize how much research is going to have to go into this story that um, they were like the OGs of the new adult genre. Like, I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but I was, I've been there from the beginning, not to be one of those people, but... You know, when I got my Kindle and this ebook craze started and this ebook publishing thing started to just find its feet to make sure that the work that you're putting out there matches the quality of published books, meaning there's no typos and editing errors. Their book might be doing okay here in America, but the book, but their book is doing amazing in Canada. But I would find like the first book in the third or the first book in the fifth, and I don't even know how many books there are in that series, but. I'm the kind of person that if I had been able to find on Book Outlet the first three books, I would have bought them. But the fact that I could only find the first and the third or the first and the fourth, like, I never got around to buying them. But I figured I would read them one day, right? <laughs> well, then Mayana does her video. And I'm like, okay, now I'm even more intrigued. This is Cindy's reaction video to the after trailer and her reenactment. I about lost it. If y'all have not seen that video, Please go watch that. You will thank me later because I laughed my ass off. That shit was hilarious. But I was just like, yeah, okay. Meanwhile, in the book right now and taking it seriously because I can't. I, I don't even know what to say. And she just met the love interest. So apparently it was like a One Direction fanfic. That's how it started, like, with this girl and Harry Styles. Boring. And straight lace and all these other stereotypes. And virginal, let's not forget. Gotta put that one in there. And she meets this guy who's like chatted up and rough and bad boy and edgy. And he changes her life. Probably like by treating her like shit. Which adds to why I don't want to continue reading this. But it's fine. I'll do it for you guys. <laughs> Can you see how angry I am already? This is only the sample and I'm only on like chapter three or two. How? How am I going to finish this? How am I going to continue? After, you know what After is going to do? After is going to encourage me to get back into my library flow. I'm a huge fan of the public library and I've kind of stopped going recently because I love buying books because I'm a book collector. But After is going to gonna force me to, to whip back out my library card and dust it off because there's no way I'm buying this bullshit. I can't do it. I'm not going to spend my hard-earned coins on this. I will have to motorcycle or skateboards or whatever, whatever you want to call it. Skate culture, motorcycle culture, whatever. It's not making him a bad person. There's a difference between a bad boy, which is basically just going against societal norms, right? 
bad boy, edgy, ooh, I'm wearing a leather jacket, I have tattoos. Oh, society norms, I'm going against you. <laughs> it's a full on rant. I'm so sorry, you guys, but I'm pissed. Like, demonizing bad boys who could very well be very good boys slash good men, nice, be polite, friendly, just living their lives how they want to just because they're going against the grain of society does not mean that they're bullies, abusers, emotional or physical, toxic, mean, rude. Like, I'm just like, when did these things become synonymous? Because I don't know about y'all, but when I was in high school, I was friends with the skaters. I was friends with the goths. I was that girl that was friends with everyone. Some of my best guy friends were skater, goths, guys that had tattoos, like perfectly nice, sweet dudes. So cool. A lot of them had like great home lives, was very understanding and like cool parents or guardians that allow them to just be themselves. And I'm just like, when did we start to stand this culture of a bad boy, right? The the image of a bad boy being synonymous with someone who's literally the devil himself. That annoys me. And I'm angry for men and bad boys. Like I'm taking up for them. And it's just, it's just gotten old, right? And then he changes for her, but not after treating her like shit and putting her through the ringer. And I also hate that narrative of why do women have to be put through the ringer to earn a man's love or to outlast all the bullshit that he does to her, all of the hurt and the pain, whether emotional or physical, that he puts her through the cheating and abuse and the stringing along. And, like, ah! Like, why do women have to, or girls, have to outlast this behavior, right? Oh, you're a real one, or, or you're a down-ass bitch, or, like, oh, yes, Bonnie and Clyde. Like, all this shit, like, you have to outlast, like, all this pain and, like, withstand all of this bullshit to make it to the end, to be with this guy who has learned from hurting you and doing all these horrible things to you and just changed for the better. And he's a better man now because of you. Fuck that. <laughs>